Let me take the privilege to introduce our esteemed guest, the force behind this company, Mr. Sanjay Sharma, Managing Director of Air Finance Private Limited. Mr. Sharma has 30 plus years of experience with banks such as HSBC, Standard Chartered, HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, Ujjivan Small Finance Bank, etc. He is a graduate from IIT Bombay and IIM Bangalore. He pioneered the start of direct banking channels in HSBC and HDFC Bank in India. He heads Air Finance and directly oversees its strategy, risk, and finance functions. Over to you, Mr. Sharma. Thank you, Harith, and uh, good evening to everyone. I think it's a great opportunity to be with you and uh, to tell you what we do at IF Finance. Uh, first of all, IF Finance is a company that started about nine years back. And the reason we chose I as a name, because in Hindi, I means income. And uh, this is a initiative which is all about creating income generating businesses, especially in the micro and small scale segment. Uh, so we looked at the problem of uh, micro scale enterprises and realized that uh, they do not get any lending support from organized players like banks or NBFCs. And this was a very, very large market that if catered to and if uh, serviced well, can lead to a very large scale uh, business. And that's exactly what we have done. So this we are today the only scaled pan India player. So we are uh, there in multiple states and we'll talk a little bit about that also which provides unsecured loans to micro enterprises. Uh, why exactly in this space? I told you that it's a very large space. And when you look at the total number of micro enterprises or total number of enterprises in the country, of those enterprises, most of them lie in the micro scale. The estimate is that they are 63 million or about six and a half crore. Uh, this is the estimate that was done in 2010. And today, I think there must be more than seven crore micro enterprises uh, uh, which are uh, there in India. The problem that these uh, enterprises have is that they have a very large uh, requirement of uh, funds, almost close to 12 trillion rupees. And, and of the 12 trillion, hardly three or four trillion is uh, met and eight trillion is not met today in the market. So it's a very, very large market that we address. And the reason this has not been, uh, has not attracted multiple NBFCs is because there are some challenges like uh, the customer is not digitally savvy, so he would not get approached typically by a fintech. Uh, they have very limited records, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, and the ticket size is small. So these are the problems why lending to this business is difficult and uh, needs a very specialized approach. Uh, can we move to the next slide? The same, uh, uh, same uh, view, if you look at, uh, we look at uh, these large enterprises, and typically you, would have seen them in multiple towns, whether it's tier two town, tier one town, et cetera. And three examples will prove the point of what are the customers that we are talking of. For example, in Gandhinagar in Delhi, which is the largest uh, cluster for, uh, for ready-made garments, for uh, sewed uh, garments, uh, you have a customer who typically has 12 employees, his annual turnover is small, it's about 22 lakh uh, rupees or 2.2 million. And he needs a loan of typically about 1 lakh to 1.25 lakhs. And uh, in 18 months, he wants to return it. Uh, and he doesn't mind paying a return, uh, interest of 25, 26%. There's another customer, let's say in Katni, in MP, who is running a iron fabrication and metal work uh, manufacturing, again, with a turnover of about 1.8 million or uh, about 18 lakhs in a year with two employees. Or there could be a customer, let's say in Merit, we have a customer who, uh, who uh, she looks after a power loom and garment manufacturing cluster. And again, the turnover is about uh, 1.8 million or 18 lakhs and with three employees. So these are enterprises which have one to five or six employees, typical turnover of 20 lakhs to up to a crore and really very small in their scale. Move on, please. So the problem with this segment, as I said, is that very small ticket typically people want only a one lakh to two lakh sort of loan for their working capital needs. Very occasionally they need larger loans like five lakhs or so, but that's when they are setting up a new uh, shop or uh, buying more machinery. But in typical, it's a one lakh to two lakh requirement that is there. They do not have uh, typical documentation that is used for lending. They don't have income tax returns. They don't have uh, uh, 
they have pan cards they have bank accounts but very little transaction in the bank accounts and they are below the gst threshold so they don't have a gst uh, return that one can use so uh, i think that's a segment that we have uh, we address and uh, these segment obviously needs a tremendous amount of hand holding through the various loan cycles and therefore we have a feet on street model which uses a lot lot of digital or uh, fintechy sort of uh, technology and it needs a holistic approach not only on finance but also looking at their other developmental needs like uh, developing their markets developing their quality of product etc so you have written on the side that these are sticky customers so it means to say that they keep coming back to uh, air finance for regular borrowings oh absolutely in fact the uh, when we do a customer satisfaction survey we get extremely high scores in the in the high 90s and uh, our same customer after paying their loan for uh, one and a half years two year whatever the tenor was usually comes back to us for a second loan and we have today many customers who have completed three cycles some have completed even four cycles so very sticky customer and uh, primarily because the customer does not have too many good options available to him in the market and even today there is very little in terms of scale play in the organized lending uh, side for this segment okay okay sure go on uh, so uh, when we look at how do we stack up therefore in this segment and how we have addressed this i will talk about later because that's the biggest question that how do you underwrite this segment and how do you make sure that the quality of book which means the delinquency is ma managed to a good level uh, but before we get into that there are three areas that i will talk and there's just one one slide for each of them one is that we are the unsecured business loan uh, lender where typically our loan size is 50000 rupees to 300000 rupees and this is exactly what the customer needs and it is uh, fulfilling exactly what the customer has told us and we have done surveys over the customers as to what their requirements are the second area i'll talk a little bit about is that how do we underwrite using a cluster based underwriting method and the uh, method which ultimately leads to low credit losses and third is how do we use technology to approach the service so that the cost efficiencies are brought down for a small ticket loan uh, so first thing we talked of is uh, that what sort of offering uh, are we making before i get into those three items that i mentioned uh, we have three different product types and you can see them on the slide there we have a hypothecation loan we have a quasi mortgage loan and a mortgage loan the quasi mortgage loan and mortgage loans are both given against a property the difference being that in quasi mortgage the title is clear but may not be registerable and in mortgage loan the title is clear as well as registered hypothecation loan is uh, a loan without any property or any fixed asset uh, as a guarantee guarantee and hypothecation loan is where most of our lending almost 94% of our lending happens in the hypothecation loan area because this is what the customer really needs this is this is the customer's uh, customer product fit which suits the customer the best a hypothecation loan uh, uh, could you just stay on that a hypothecation hypothecation loan typically is a 50000 rupees to 200000 rupee loan the quasi mortgage goes up to 250000 and mortgage uh, over 250000 and the typical tenors are 6 uh, months to 30 months for hypothecation loan up to 60 months for quasi mortgage and up to it can go up to 10 years for mortgage loan but we rarely have loans more than 7 years old uh, so i think that is the product uh, move on please the second thing i talked about besides being the scaled uh, uh, unsecured uh, business uh, loans that we give is the use of clusters and this slide roughly uh, tells you how we go about uh, looking at a cluster we look at a type of business for example in jalandhar you have a very good sports goods cluster and we have studied that cluster to see what are the non financial surrogates or markers that we can use to underwrite a customer similarly we have looked at the power loom sector in salem or uh, woodwork in chennapatna etc and for each of these business types or clusters as we call them we have a income assessment method which is used for credit appraisal that's a, on the right side we have shown that that for each cluster we have a cluster report or a study which builds the heuristics or the basis on which we can underwrite and then that becomes the basis of assessing income and the credit appraisal so for every customer who applies 
we figure out which cluster or which type of business does the customer lie in and we underwrite the customer accordingly. A lot of this process is automated. So no single person has to remember how to underwrite uh, sports goods or how to underwrite black bangles, et cetera. That is the second uh, slide on credit assessment. The next slide is about the use of digital technology as well as physical branch network. As I told you that since our customer needs a lot of handholding, so we have had to open branches in more than 396 locations across India. And uh, each branch has loan offices which can service the customer and source business. At the same time, we follow a completely digital model where there's no paper in our process. So from the stage one itself, there's no loan application form. There is, it's all digital, but we still have a loan, a loan officer who stands in front of the customer and helps the customer complete the entire paperless loan origination process. Uh, we pick up the KYC documents, the income related documents, if any, directly through a digital uh, means. And we are completely digitized to get uh, credit bureau reports, to get KYC validations, et cetera. Just like you would probably find in many of the, the, uh, the technology savvy uh, banks or fintechs. Okay. Now, talking of reach, I talked to you and told you that we are spread across India and we are a scaled player across India. And this, uh, I think, map of India tells you that we are there in almost 22 states, very few states where we are not present yet and will probably grow in the coming years. And one of the reasons to do this has been to diversify away the risk. Uh, we recognize that being in, concentrated into one state or two states can bring in some risk, political risk, uh, uh, even the geography uh, based uh, risk, floods, et cetera. Uh, and therefore we want, want it to be in multiple states. Today, none of the states has more than 15% of our business and that therefore diversifies our risk in terms of geography. You can see that even in the north, south, east, and west, is a well-spread diversified book that we hold. So we are not a typical north-based player, nor are we a south-based player or a west-based player, et cetera. The other thing that we've done is that we have multiple clusters, as I mentioned, and uh, I think today we have over 120 clusters None of our clusters have more than 5% of our business. That's another way of diversifying that I'm not focused entirely into grocery shops or I'm not focused entirely into uh, rugs and carpets because these industries can go through upheavals and we don't want to be caught uh, in that uh, net. And therefore it's a very diversified play that has been, uh, that, had, uh, that the money has been put, uh, put into. Moving on, Let's quickly have a look at the process. The process, as I hinted to you, that it starts by sourcing through a loan officer or loan advisor. And these are people who are there in our branches. One thing that we've done here is that we don't rely on any of the external third party direct sales agents or DSAs. It is important because that helps ensure that the customer stays sticky to us, is not uh, taken away by the DSA to someone else. Second is that the quality of sourcing is extremely good. And I think that's where we have focused and made sure that we develop our own loan officers. These loan officers go to the customer, help him fill in an application on a mobile phone. It's a paperless process, as I said. From there, the data is used to validate the KYCs, go to credit bureau to see if there's any credit history of this customer. Uh, validate uh, any other areas that we want to validate. It goes through a machine learning model that we have to say which are the customers which are suited to our requirements. And then finally, it comes to credit appraisal where we use the credit uh, appraisal of the cluster, the cluster-based credit appraisal that I mentioned. Here again, the two-layered credit assessment is done. One is done at the branch. And the second is centralized at the HO or the head office and all decisions to lend are made from the head office. So there is no delegation of lending authority at the branch level, and that ensures that there is no conflict of interest or uh, compromises made in underwriting. Once the loan is given, we monitor the loan, and a loan utilization visit is made within 45 days of giving the loan to check up whether uh, the money has been used for the businesses that were sent. 
And besides that, the final aspect of uh, servicing is collection. 100% uh, of our collection is done in-house. Uh, we primarily use non-cash ways of uh, collecting. 95% of our customers are, pay, uh, are registered on ACH. So the approach is not to typically use cash, but to have digital or uh, non-cash modes of payment, whether it's ACH, whether it's UPI, et cetera. Only in small portion of our customers, we have to actually go and collect on their, from their premises in cash. Now, let me give you a, a, a sort of a impression of how data decisioning is used. We use a fair number of sophisticated statistical scoring as well as artificial intelligence scoring models. And one example that we use here is for repeat. When a customer is eligible for a repeat loan, our data analytics model classifies them into three big categories, A, B, and C. A is our best customer who has rarely uh, even bounced a check, has been uh, performing very well. For these customers, we offer a pre-approved loan program where they're given a good increase in their limit uh, or the loan amount, and they are pre-approved. The second is a uh, category of B is where, uh, while these customers also go through a auto uh, approval or a semi-approval uh, process, but their limits are lower. And category C are customers who, if they are interested in loans, would have to go through a full appraisal as if they were a fresh loan. So, I think this is a very simplified uh, model that we have, uh, where uh, this model is used uh, to classify customers, then the call center executives call up these customers, try to convince them to take on the repeat loan. Uh, once the customer agrees on a repeat loan, there's a loan review visit done by the credit team, and then a pre-approved sanction is given out. Uh, this is one of the many examples of uh, how we have used data science. In uh, repeat, we have also used data sciences in collection, in uh, how we sort business, how we eliminate the early uh, filtering of uh, poor customers, etc. Uh, moving on, uh, the collection. Now, I talked about the fact that we have a very good track record of collection, and there is a graph coming up later which will tell you what our uh, par numbers are or collection efficiencies are at various buckets. But before we get into that, I want to show to you what exactly is the method used. And the method is that we have a five-tiered way of collecting. First is that we have a set of people in the call center who can make a call. And we have an AI model which actually classifies customers into uh, various types of customers who are most likely to pay, who are more difficult to get payments out of. The least, uh, the most likely customers are only send an SMS or a simple message on their phone. Uh, then we use the call center executive in case uh, the SMS does not suffice. Beyond the call center executive, if the customer still hasn't paid, a loan officer can go there and loan officers also, besides collecting, uh, besides servicing and originating loans, also collect uh, payments. We have also some soft collectors which collect anything which is in the first, first bucket up to 30 days. Over 30 days, the case moves into a hard collector uh, bucket where the hard collector handles about 55 cases and they uh, make the collection beyond 30. And when it crosses 330 days, there is a separate settlement team which helps in trying to resolve the case and settle the case. Uh, and uh, and uh, then it finally moves into write-off. So uh, if I look at the portfolio trends now, you will see that in this graph, something that really stands out is that while we have a very large portfolio, we have uh, we had a portfolio of 2,700 crores as of March 23, and today it is more than 3,100 crores and growing rapidly. Our 30-day par itself is a very low number. Even in secured uh, lenders, you will find that par 30 uh, DPD often is in the range of 8 or 9%. In our case, we have always kept it below 5%, between 5 and uh, 6. I think in today it is at around 4.5%. Uh, similarly, if you go to par 90, you'll find that our par 90 typically has been in the 2.5% sort of range. Even during demonetization, our par 90 was about 2.7%. Uh, 
During COVID times, for a short period, it went up to seven, but it has come down and it is at 2.9%. Today, uh, if I look at the Part 19 number, this sits at 2.4%. So while it is primarily, as I told you, 96% is unsecured loans, but they are very granular loans with small ticket size of 1 lakh to 2 lakhs. And this granularity leads to very low delinquency overall. And these numbers that you see of par 90 of uh, 2, 2.4%, as I said, are similar to how secured, uh, uh, secured lenders typically uh, want their par 90s to be. So I think that this is the proof of uh, the fact that we have been able to manage this over long uh, cycles, number of years, at uh, a very stable uh, rate of delinquency and management of delinquency. The Well, I'll come to the founders and the board of directors. Let me just mention one more thing that today when we look at our portfolio, because our tenors are typically one and a half to two years, I don't have anything left of the pre-IPO, uh, pre-COVID book. If you ask me that what is your pre-COVID book in this entire 23,100 crore, that may not be even 1%. So one is that the pre-COVID book has all run off and the new book that we are seeing are actually showing signs of better performance than what we used to see pre-COVID. So very soon, these numbers, I expect, will start reflecting how pre-COVID numbers used to be. Moving on, uh, the team, uh, while I have worked for 35 years in uh, various banks in India and outside, I have worked in uh, HSBC in uh, Standard Chart Bank. I worked in HDFC Bank when HDFC Bank was being set up in 96 or so. I worked with uh, ICC Bank and have a fair amount of experience in lending specifically and lending in the small ticket uh, segment. The board of directors, uh, there are three independent directors uh, who are mentioned on the right. Uh, you have Mr. Vinay Bajal, who's an ex-CGM of RBI who serves on our board. Mr. Naveen Maini is the ex-DMD of SIDBI, uh, and he has been on the board for a number of years. And Arpita Pal, who uh, is also the MD of uh, and board member of MCRIL, is one of the independent directors. So we have three independent directors on the board with very good and uh, solid professional backgrounds. The other four directors mentioned are investor directors. Mr. Vivek Mathur is the nominee from Elevation Capital or uh, CEF Partners, at, as it used to be called earlier. Mr. Navroz Udwadia is uh, uh, the nominee of Alpha Wave or Falcon Edge, as it used to be called. Mr. Kaushik Anand is partner of A91. And Mr. Karthik Srivats is from LGT Impact. Besides that, we also have another investor, which is Capital G. We are one of the few companies that Capital G or Google Capital has invested in this space of lending. And we have Maj Maj Invest as the last investor. The team that uh, runs this business is a very experienced team. I talked a little bit about my uh, experience. Uh, but under me are very capable deputies or the chiefs as a, or the CXOs. Uh, Neeraj, who's the deputy CEO, who used to be in Bajaj Finance earlier, he has worked in ABN AMRO, Royal Bank of Scotland, and ICC Bank. Uh, the CFO is Mr. Krishan Gopal, who has worked in PNB Housing Finance. He has uh, worked with PwC earlier and Deloitte. Mr. Ujwal George, who's the chief operating officer, has uh, 26 years of experience and has worked in RBL Bank, Barclays, ICC Bank, and HSBC. And Gino Joseph, who's the chief technology officer, has worked in Barclays in ADCB Bank and with IDFC first. So um, this gives you a sense of you know, how the next layer is in the organization and we have a layer below them that are also very experienced. On the funding side, we have raised uh, multiple rounds of funds in debt. Uh, and you can see that it's again a very diversified book and you'll find this theme of diversification that is very close to our heart that why we want to diversify whom we lend to, we want to diversify the geography. Similarly, we want to diversify our sources of funds. And you'll find that we have source funds through term loans, we have source funds through NCDs, whether listed or unlisted, secured or unsecured. We have uh, NCD structured uh, with uh, joint DFI lending. We have cash credit from banks. We have 
uh, securitization of PTCs, and we have pooled data shells. So we have done almost all the various types. And you can see the pie diagram that shows that, you know, that there's a good balance of uh, various methods or channels of sourcing uh, debt. Uh, on the right side, you have some of the names of people who have lent to us on the DFI world. Some of the biggest uh, in the DFI is FMO, Blue Orchard, uh, Triodos, Responsibility, Triple Jumps. Uh, all of them have lent to us and uh, continue to repeatedly give us debt. Among the banks, uh, ICCA Bank, HDFC Bank, Federal, SIDB, RBL Bank, CBS, DCB are some of the banks that have funded us either uh, through term loans or uh, through, uh, through purchase of our NCDs. On the NBCFC side, we have Tata Capital, Credit Size Home, Northern Arc, and so on, uh, who have also given us funds either through term loans or through, uh, through buying our bonds. So again, on the debt side, uh, we have raised almost 2390 crores over the period of time. And uh, I think uh, we have a very, very well diversified and a quality names uh, which provide us debt. Investors, uh, very quickly, uh, Elevation or, uh, or uh, SAF Partners was one of the first to invest in us. Then you have LGT, which is an impact fund, which is a sovereign fund of Liechtenstein in uh, Europe. A91 is a fund that has been uh, set up by ex-executives of Sequoia Capital. Capital G is the Google Capital uh, Fund. Uh, Alpha Wave uh, is Falcon Edge, uh, which is uh, one of the very active uh, investors in uh, modern companies today. And Merge Invest, which is a Denmark, Denmark based fund. These are the four, six uh, major investors. Uh, finally, uh, coming to impact, and I said that we want to give our customers a holistic uh, product. So besides lending, which we do quite well, and uh, I think uh, we keep on growing at a good pace because there's so much that can be done in the market. Uh, we also provide them some support through uh, providing them uh, opportunities to improve the quality of their product, to improve the way they run their businesses, and the way they can market themselves or the marketplaces where they can sell. And we have done that in various clusters. Uh, we have done it in sports goods clusters. We have done it in dairy cluster, et cetera. And over 90% of our uh, loans are given where women are co-borrowers. We have more than 180 plus industry clusters as, as has been mentioned. We have impacted more than 1.7 million lives through the customers that we, uh, we have and their employees. Uh, we have a social development program that I talked about, which cover various things like book advisory, bookkeeping, et cetera, also. And uh, we have a environmental, social governance, po governance policy, and we follow most of the requirements of the regulator in terms of uh, compliances. I think uh, that is uh, about it. We have been recognized in multiple forums. We have won a fair number of awards, and some of them are mentioned here. Uh, I think there's some good work that the company does, and which finds a lot of recognition in the various spaces. We were rated as the second best company to work for in India GPW in the year uh, in the last year, and we continue to do well on uh, various fronts, including the way we take care of our people. And this is uh, one of the slides that has been put in. Uh, we were one of the two uh, entities or uh, corporations that uh, the Queen, that Queen Maxima, who is the United Nations Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance, when she visited India about uh, a few years before COVID, uh, we were one of the two industries that she uh, she came and visited. Uh, the other being the Dabbawalas of uh, Bombay, which are quite famous. And uh, they, she actually visited our customers in the sports cluster in Meerut. And you can see her there uh, looking at a customer who makes cricket balls. And the women there are uh, actually sewing the cricket balls. So this is one of the areas that we, uh, we take pride in. Thank you, Silo, for sharing your wonderful insights about your business. And the most important point for which the investors have flocked in today and attending this webinar is to subscribe to the NCD offering, which is available uh, on India Bonds platform. So investors, this product is available. This is a listed, rated, secured, transferable, redeemable, fully paid up 
non convertible debentures or ncds which are said these are senior bonds uh, with india rating a minus stable the face value of bond is 1 lakh rupees uh, coupon rate is 10.60 per annum with quarterly interest payment as well as the redemption is in a staggered format for after the 3 months of the issuance every quarter the redemption will be there equal division for the next 6 quarters uh, 16.66% of the face value will be refunded uh, at this moment the irr works out for investors up close to 11% the final redemption date is 26 january 25 Uh, these are listed bonds as said which are available on wdm and bsc uh, catalyst is the trustee and kfin technologies is the registrar for this issue the bonds are available on india bonds platform uh, you can log in and subscribe to this bond the bonds uh, for your investment needs 11% is quite an attractive yield at this moment of time to invest in these papers as our aum growth from last uh, fy22 to 23 was around 57% do you think we would be able to sustain it at the same pace of growth i think that's a good question and uh, see uh, the reason we are growing at 57% uh, is primarily for two reasons one is that the aum size that we have today is small we are only at 3100 crore and with that uh, sort of uh, sort of scale putting on 1500 crores of uh, aum in a single year is not as big a task as for some of the larger nbfcs and banks second is that this segment is very large as i told you that there are close to 7 crore enterprises today our portfolio has active base of 350000 customers so you can see that we have not even scratched the surface of this segment uh, so the scale the uh, market exists and uh, i think uh, therefore we can continue to grow probably at 40 to 50% uh, for the next couple of years and then once we become larger than 6 7000 crores hopefully that will uh, settle down a little lower but if you ask me as of today can we grow at 50 55% yes for another year or so okay. thank you so much interesting query uh, i have received one more query from ms shweta more and she is asking are these secured bonds and so what is the collateral kept with the debenture trustee uh so yes shweta these are secured bonds and securities against the receivables uh that is what so if i'm correct sir you would like to add something onto it yeah i think there's a portfolio that is uh, a collateral so in that respect uh, they are secured uh, by uh, by the by the collateral there's a question by mr singh as we are doing very small ticket of micro loans how is it different from mfi loans yeah see the difference lies in the fact that uh, first of all we give loans only to owners of micro enterprises so uh, we would not give it to a person who is running a auto rickshaw or someone who is running a fruit cart etc these are people who typically run a manufacturing unit or a trading uh, shop etc uh, the second is that uh, because this is a segment of uh, small or micro business owners they uh, uh, we can insist that we will not deal in cash so all our disbursements are made into the bank accounts and the repayments happen through ach this is another big difference because mfi still uh, go on the field and collect 